the thermodynamics. The thermodynamics comprises two words. One is thermo and the second one is dynamics. Thermo means which is related to heat, thermal energy, temperature, etc. And dynamics indicates motion. So this subject deals with motion of thermal energy or the distribution of temperature in any substance. For any thermodynamic analysis, we define any mechanical equipment, any heat transfer equipment like turbine, heat exchanger or pump, a close domain. This domain is known as system and outside this domain is known as surroundings. So it is the size which tells the relation between surroundings and the system. So in system it is of three kinds. This is known as system boundary. Now system is of three kinds. First one is open system. Second one is closed system and Third one is isolated system. So first we are defined what is thermodynamics. Then for analysis we model any thermal equipment in the, in the system and surroundings. And this gap between system and surroundings, the interface between system and surroundings is known as boundary depending upon the type of the boundary it is open system closed system and isolated system closed system means so we have two quantity one is mass second one is energy so in between system and surroundings through boundary Mass can be transferred, energy can be transferred, and both can transfer. So for closed system, or sometimes we define this only by system, when mass cannot transfer, but energy can transfer. So in a closed system, or it is simply defined by system, mass cannot transfer, energy can transfer. Example, say one piston cylinder arrangement, and in between this cylinder there is some gas. Now if the wall of this cylinder is not insulated, then heat can transfer from the surroundings to this gas. But due to this leak proof arrangement, mass cannot transfer. So the analysis of this system is by closed system. So in this case, mass can transfer, energy can't. Second is open system. Or we call this control volume. CV. In control volume, 
both mass and energy can transfer say i have a porous wall and in this porous wall we place some gas so due to the porosity of this wall the outer gas outer state outer surroundings is filled with air air can come into this system and also energy can pass across the boundary so this is known as open system and third one is isolated system Isolated system means it is not talking to the surroundings by any means. Means mass and energy, both mass and energy cannot transfer from the system to surroundings or surroundings to system. Say I have one. Insulated chamber, and in between I have some gas. So neither mass, so neither the surrounding gas, or neither the energy can come into this gas. So this is the isolated system. So I repeat: for closed system, energy can transfer, but mass cannot transfer. For open system or control volume, mass and energy both can transfer. Just recall the like, Eulerian method in fluid dynamics. In Eulerian method in fluid dynamics, to derive all the equation, we just choose a simple wireframe. So in this wireframe, both mass can come and energy can come. So we define this thing in fluid dynamics is similar. So it is similar to the open system. Sometimes it is known as control volume, or sometimes it is known as open system. Control volume means the area, the volume of this system is not changing, but mass can come into the system, or energy can come into the system through the mass. An isolated system is both neither mass nor energy can transfer from the surrounding system or system to surroundings. So this is about the system. For any thermodynamic analysis, for any mechanical thermal mechanical analysis, we use either open system or closed system or isolated system. Now comes to the properties. Properties means the characteristics of any system. Say this is my system. This surroundings is this, and this is my boundary. Now to indicate the situation of the system, we Use some parameters. Say it is the air conditioning room. So this system is the AC room. So in this case, to define the system, what we use? We use temperature of the room. Second, humidity of the room, etc. So this temperature, humidity, is the properties of the system. Similarly, the density, pressure is also the properties of the system. 
So properties is like temperature, pressure, density, entropy, enthalpy, and many more. Now depending on the type of the properties, it is of two types. One is intensive another one is extensive so properties of two type the properties of system or simply the properties what is mean by intensive property so this is chamber a which is filled by a gas now temperature of this gas t is equal to 30 degree centigrade and which is uniform throughout this system now if anyone take some amount of gas from this chamber the temperature will also 30 degree to that amount so this kind of property is known as intensive property where if you decrease the mass or if you increase the mass the property remains same so temperature intensive property density another intensive property so anything which is not related to mass just make a note not related to mass say energy this gas also contains some energy to work. So, energy of gas A. The energy, the total energy, the total energy of gas is not a intensive property. Because if you say you took this amount of gas, then the energy will decrease. Now, if you divide by total energy by the mass of A, so energy by mass or you can say specific energy, then this is known as intensive property. Because now energy per mass is same this amount of gas and also this amount of gas. So in short, If property P is a function of mass, not is equal to function of mass, then it is a intensive property. Examples are temperature, pressure, specific volume, density. specific enthalpy any property starts with this specific term is means that enthalpy or the that property per unit mass so this is on the intensive property now extensive property which is not intensive means property is a function of mass say this is chamber A and which is filled with a gas then mass or weight of the system the weight of this gas is also this property of this mass so if you 
कि दिस अमाउंट ऑफ दिस अमाउंट ऑफ गैस देन द मास और द वेट विल चेंज सो इट इज द एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी आ जनरल रूल इज फॉर एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी p is equal to a for m1 plus a for m2 means you can add this property this is the additive thing but in the case of intensive property p is not p is equal to a for m1 is equal to a for m2 is equal to a for m1 plus m2 so in this system m1 is this much and m2 is this much so for the case of intensive property this property is function of m1 also function of m2 and also for m1 plus m2 and for extensive property it is the addition of this function of m1 plus function of m2 the next is topic is properties of the pure substance now what is mean by pure substance say in this bucket so water is there in this chamber nitrogen gas is there and in this chamber air is there and in this bucket ice is there now it is totally in our hand to select the boundary of the system now in this case for ice let's first talk about this nitrogen and air pure substance means when it is made by one chemical component one homogeneous component in nitrogen it is only nitrogen but in air it is basically o2 plus n2 so this air is not any pure substance for nitrogen it is pure substance if we consider this is my control volume so in this in this system so this dotted line blue dotted line so in this system only one substance which is nitrogen is there and in this system two substance nitrogen and oxygen is there so this is not the pure substance because two chemical combination but here it is single chemical composition now come to this diagram if you choose your control volume like this then in this system air and water is there so this is not a pure substance now if you choose the control volume like this by this red line so only water is there so it is a pure substance if you choose it is like this for the ice so only ice which is have only one chemical form 
combination which is H2O. It is also H2O. So this is the properties of the pure substance. This, this is the pure substance. This is pure substance. And we can only define properties of pure substance because for the case of say air, it is a combination of oxygen and hydrogen. If this ratio of oxygen and nitrogen varies, then these properties will also vary. So we can't define the properties of air. But if we fix this oxygen and nitrogen ratio, in general we take 16.3 to 1 to oxygen and nitrogen ratio. And if we fix this ratio, then this can be treated as properties of person that we will discuss in charge of false law. But for this sake, we will not consider this here as a properties of pure substance. State. The second keyword is state. What is mean by state? Say a substance is there. If you define two and three properties of this substance, then you can uniquely represent this substance in any thermodynamic analysis. So consider idle gas. For idle gas, PV is equal to energy. So if you know P and if you know V, you can find the temperature. And if you know also the mass, you can also find the density. So only two states, two states or two properties is required to uniquely define, to uniquely define all the intensive properties. I repeat, all the intensive properties, not the extensive properties. To uniquely define whole system, two properties plus mass will completely define the history of this system. So by these two properties you can represent this substance in any thermodynamic plane. Thermodynamic plane means say this is P and this is V. So this is the one thermodynamic plane. So you can define this system, the state of this system uniquely in this plane. I repeat, for any substance by some number of the state, by some number of properties, you can uniquely define it into a particular state and you can do part of the thermodynamics analysis. For the case of idle gas, you require two properties plus mass of the gas, then you can define entropy, enthalpy, density and all other things. But this concept, or this representation of unique definition of any property of any state of a system is known as state. So this is a system or close when this word system is used it means it is a closed system. So only energy can come into the system 
but no mass and this is full of water now you did it so this water will convert it to steam so now this condition is like this this is water and this is steam now you also give energy this is a one bunsen burner this is the flame of the bunsen burner then this whole thing becomes steam and now you increase the temperature by giving energy it is also steam the temperature of the steam increase so first you have water in a closed system now you increase the energy increase the temperature then water becomes steam so this is partially by water partially steam then carrying on this this water wholly converted into steam now if you increase the energy or if you give energy to the system this temperature of the steam will increase say you do this whole process in constant pressure so we used a mechanism by this mechanism always the constant the pressure of this system remain same so this is a one phased case now you use two properties to represent the system so all the properties is in unit mass so only two properties will give you the all the intensive properties the so temperature one properties and specific volume means volume per unit mass so this is two intensive properties so from our high school physics what happened if you give heat to the water so is so this is the first starting point the state of this start, state of this starting point is this so if you increase the temperature the volume for same mass will increase now when phase change occurs it remains at a constant temperature say so, like water when water converts to steam it is in 100 degree centigrade temperature in normal atmospheric pressure so this temperature remain constant and in this process water converted to steam so now so this is a a is this the state of the a by represented by a single point now this is a b so b b somewhat here which is combination of steam and water then c which when whole water is converted to steam now when you increase the temperature obviously the volume of the steam will increase so it will go like this so in the first case 
you took pressure as P1. Now in the second case, same process A B C D. This is C and this is D. The same process A B C D is done for another pressure P2. So This will go like this. So this is for P1, P2. Now you increase the pressure to P3. So this is by experiment. This is for like this. Now if you are going to increase this pressure P, the constant pressure, then you will get this kind of bell shaped curve square I will draw this in a bit further So this is the situation. This is for this is this process in constant temperature and also in constant pressure. This is water. You are adding heat to this water. So due to this heat addition, the water temperature will increase certain level up to the 100 degree centigrade and after that this water will convert to the steam. This conversion of steam will occur at constant temperature and constant pressure at 100 degree centigrade temperature and pre atmospheric temperature. Now if you change this pressure then this 100 degree centigrade will change. So this is so these cards are the combination of the same process for different pressure. So it is a P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7. So in this zone, in the left of this bell shaped curve, it is in liquid state. So all this point, this is in the liquid state and this zone, it is in the gaseous state. So in this well shaped curve, the left portion is in liquid phase, completely liquid phase and the right portion is completely gaseous phase and intermediate this portion this portion is 
gas and liquid so if you consider say this portion it will contain gas and liquid both now when this point move toward this direction then this liquid will convert it to gas Now consider a single constant pressure line. This is a single constant pressure line. So here state is liquid. Here it is. Partially liquid and partially gas, and it is completely gas. Now, to represent any point in this line, we use a quantity known as dryness factor which is dryness factor is any properties in this line is defined by f f stand for fluid and any properties along this line is defined by g say so, volume the specific volume of this zone is fv or the specific volume of this line is fg like this Now, for a particular pure substance, for a particular pure substance, this temperature is T saturation temperature, which is a function of pressure of this process which is p set so for a particular pure substance you can find the relation between p set and p set from thermodynamic statement you already know one that for water at 100 degree centigrade if it is t set then p set is one atmospheric and when with in one atmospheric pressure this water converted to the steam at 100 degree centigrade temperature 